Welcome to NGN's coverage of the 2012 WIF Diff World Ultimate Guts and Championships. We are live from Osaka, Japan. It's our inaugural day of broadcasting. This is our second game today. We're looking at the Japanese national team in red against the Australian national team in the yellow jerseys and green Move shorts. On. I'm Lou Burris. With me today is Chase Sparling Beckley. Chase, what can we expect from the Australians? Well, the Australians uh, are a team that is comprised of, uh, they're a, sort of a true national team. So they're bringing um, women from all across Australia, but they actually um, mostly draw from all of us. Uh, two main cities, Melbourne and Sydney, and Canterbury to a certain extent, um, and the major club teams in those cities. Um, so I think we'll see from this team, uh, the, and, and not only that, but they've also been playing um, uh, for a, quite a bit together. They've had a fairly long tryout process, and so they're going to be pretty confident. They'll have good chemistry. And I think uh, when we spoke to them earlier, one of the things they said is they're really interested in just taking what the other team gives them. So they do have a mismatch on uh, for height, clearly, on the Japanese women. But I wouldn't expect them to necessarily just bomb it. What about Japan, Lou? Um, the Japan team is really a combination team. Three major uh, Tokyo area teams, Uno, Mud, and Huck. Um, and those teams have combined and through um, twice, uh, one practice every two weeks, they've, they've built a big national team. Um, they're gonna run a traditional host stack. They're gonna mix it up on defense. One of the really interesting things about this game too is, it, is actually, um, you know, I mean, this is a early tournament game, but both of these teams could easily contend for a medal spot. Yeah. Uh, and I think, um, you know, they they maybe each have slightly different expectations going to the tournament, but, um, you know, this could actually end up being a very meaningful game for seeding and for the later rounds of this tournament. Yeah, the women's division set up a little differently for the men's division is that um, the 11 women's teams are going to play a full round robin of 10 games, and the top four teams out of here are going to go into semifinals. Right away, interesting, we see uh, a 1-3-3 uh, three, three from the Australians, trapping both sides. Japanese finding some little seams in it, throw some quick motion, and they hit right away. This going to hang. Cat Phillips not able to get the D, and Namakiri on the side, uh, right on the goal line. The Australians stay in the zone. Namakiri able to find her way around. Fujikawa. Fujioka to uh, Oyama for the goal. 1-0 Japan. That was really, uh, you know, like the previous game we saw from the Japanese men, really quick, uh, very controlled but aggressive handler movement there from the Japanese women. So they were a, a really amazingly similar. A really amazingly similar style. I, you know, I'm not totally convinced they threw to, other than the huck, which was a fairly contested play, I'm not totally sure they threw to anyone other than handlers. For the majority of that point, most of those throws were 10 yard throws. That huck is a play the Australians have to have. Yes. That was one Certainly of the, one that of the ones that, was, that, that they Kat Phillips. They have, they, have, they have two sisters on this team, Kat and Michelle Phillips, who really are the stars of this team. And you know, if you'd said, if you'd said to the Australians before the game, we're gonna give you a floater to Kat Phillips, you're gonna take it. Yeah, they're gonna take that. Absolutely. And, and you know, I think she just went, as a defender in that situation, I think a lot of the times, uh, the temptation is to just like jump your highest yeah. jump. But really, if you make it hard on the offense, it's oftentimes the best best right. play you can make. Right. And when we were talking with the Australian captains, they said that this is a young team and that one of their biggest concern is dealing with the nerves and and the Phillips sisters are quite young. And um, that could have been a, a just an over just eager, a little, just yeah. a little too much adrenaline. The wind has died a little from the first yeah. game. Yeah. Really beautiful run through block. Um, Foul called. Uh, by Moe Sameshima, and it is called a foul, not contested. 
looked like it was going to be a block until the very last minute. Uh, oh. Turnover on a swing. Pidai. That was just a little bit of a rush throw. It seems like it almost didn't come off wrong on that turnover. And here's a shot from Japan again. A nice grab in the end zone. Yonehara with the just staying in there, pursuing, pursuing, pursuing as the bottom starts to drop out of the pass. You know, that that was actually, uh, I when I saw that throw come off, I thought it was going to be a little bit more of a jump ball. But she played the win perfectly, threw it to the speedy receiver. And yeah, she the, put, the bottom did. Just yeah. the bottom was the bottom dropping out of that dropped thing fast. right out of that throw. Really great play. Ragged, ragged, ragged start for uh, for the Australians. Japanese, by contrast, are inc being incredibly energetic. They're singing, they're chanting, they're jumping around, they're racing each other back to the line. Real contrast in uh, sort of mental game styles between these two teams right now. You know, oftentimes um, you see those two opposing styles, and I think in this case probably suits the personalities of the Japanese women. But but there are teams I feel like that that play that very energetic go 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 kind of between each point game, and uh, oftentimes it doesn't suit them. And that could be you know could be the case with um, the Australian women that that's just not them. Again, a wow. sort of an unforced error. It looked like she, she just caught it. Oh, she totally caught it, and then just as she was switching the forehand grip, she just let go of it. I can tell it can Threw I, like a dump to nobody. I agree. This could just be nerves from oh, the younger Australian team. Nice hand block by the big Brown. A uh, little flip to Captain Sarah Crossy. She's going to put it up. That's and a great Brown's going to book in. And, and here we see a bench clear right here yeah. for for Australia. You know, it takes that big play to get them really fired yeah. up. You'd love to see them come out on D and really yeah. force a few more errors yeah. from that Japanese handler set. So the the Australians are planning to mix up, play a variety of different Ds. Here we see here. Uh, that huck to Brown. Really, just a great throw. I've been really, what I've seen three throws from that? Sarah Crossy right now that I've really been really impressed with. That one, the other two came earlier, both first and second points when they're going downwind. She's throwing about a 30 yard under. Yeah. And your margin for error on that throw is, 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 is tiny. And she's putting it, that disc is never moving more than Open about up. three, four feet off the ground, whole flight. And she's just Open putting it right on the years. numbers. Really. Yeah. Uh, impressive disp uh, throwing display by the Australian captain so far. And this certainly game. with, um, you know, surrounded by a team full of young runners and height, you love to have that player. Yeah, it's nice to be that thrower. Man. Man. Yeah. You can just anchor. And again, a zone from Australia. Brown gets a little bit of a break. Hammer across the field to Ito. Shitsu. Fujikawa. It looks like they've transitioned now into man defense. Maybe three, four passes, you think? Yeah. Force forehand. Oh. Ooh, that should have been a block. Yeah. Right. Defense looks nice from the Australians. Outside in backhand. Just a little too far. I thought that was going to be a goal. I thought that was going to be a goal, too. I almost thought uh, she would just stand it up, run it out. You know, I was watching the Japanese women warming up yesterday and practicing yesterday. And I, one of the things I thought they did really, really well is use their quickness to make late adjustments to a disc. So mm -hmm. right here, you'll see right as she's about to catch it, instead of laying out, what I saw them doing yesterday as they were practicing is take like a little shuffle step to and to attack it. And attack it earlier rather than wait and try to make the big athletic play. Under to nobody. Fast break from And Japan. there's that quick handler moving again. Fujikawa, unmarked. 
Nice little inside out. Touch forehand to the back corner from Inamura to Ishitsu. Again, I think Japan got away with one there. Um, you know, we were saying how uh, that Japanese defender on the previous play didn't, or uh, offensive cutter rather, didn't didn't adjust quite well or throws are just a little too far. Australia really had a chance to capitalize and steal some momentum. And um, first throw error. You know, I, I don't like that first choice. Like when you walk that up to that coffin corner. You'd love to just have him hit the middle of the field right away. You have to have a completion above anything else. Yeah, that's true. You know, and so. That was, you know, not, not the easiest throw in the world. 30 you know, yard under. Just didn't. Tough throw. Yeah. You know, I mean, I guess what I say is when you're walking it up, I mean, it sounds sort of cliche to say you want a completion. Of course you want a completion, but when you're walking it up to that front corner, your number one priority is a completion. And your Just second priority is is a completion of some kind of advantage. Right. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, I mean, it, it, it wasn't the hardest throw in the world, but it wasn't the most, you know, the easiest throw either. Um, so, unfortunate, certainly. You'd like to, you'd like to make it, but it also could have been a big game. Japanese uh, women poaching off the handlers to clog into the lanes, and serves and it them works. well. Number eleven, Hidai with the D. Travel call. I wouldn't be surprised actually if we um, see that a fair amount this game. Both um, Japanese women really doing a lot of throwing, throw and go, quick handler movement, possibly without setting an appropriate pivot foot, or possibly perfectly legal, but um, Australia potentially calling them on it. And without observers, you know, it comes back. Inomata, Sameshima, losing about 15 yards. Disc up high is dropped by Miyamoto, and the Australians, I think, really catching a break there. 4-1 would have been a tough spot. A big pause, not much of a reset. Gainer over the top. A little too high. Interesting, the Australian offense is really relying on these big, Big unders, yeah. Big unders and not, it's resets. Right. Not, I mean, it's not not an easy throw not for anybody. So make sure to pick it up. Check them by Mulcher. Japan's in a pretty traditional looking host stack, three handlers back. Although then they throw this very quick movement up the field and it's almost like their cutters are just clearing for the handler dominator. Backhand force on the goal line. Oh, a lovely little cone and out. And Sumishima is going to find, I believe, an Inamura for the goal. I really like this setup here. She, she sells it hard with the fake right there and just kills that Australian defender. Oh, yeah. And that's actually Miyamoto for the goal. A little bit of redemption for Miyamoto. She'd had that, she'd had that drop up high. And and the Australians are going to call a timeout. And we're going to take a short break with Japan up four. With Chase Garling Beckley as part of your next gen broadcast, uh, broadcast crew at the 2012 WIF Diff World Open Guts Championships. Our inaugural day. We look at the Japanese women up four to one over Australia. Australia calling a timeout to try to get fired up. I think, uh, again, yeah, calling a timeout to try to Try to get fired up. That's really um, that's really where we are. And I, I think um, you know we've seen from these two teams uh, after goals and mm -hmm. uh, after getting scored on, the Japanese women largely bring almost the same amount of effort and song and dance and high fiving after a you know after getting scored on as they yeah. do when they score. And uh, Australian team, in contrast, um, really. Needs that big play, it seems like. You know, right. caught, caught a big huck from Brown 
um, and that fired their team up, but they've, they've kind of been a little bit low yeah, on energy yeah, outside of that. They're a young team, you know, and, and co particularly compared to the Japanese team, which is a very experienced team, both domestically in terms of their battles with each other, with their club, within their club teams, and also internationally, this team has traveled a ton. And um, it's so much harder for a young team to maintain a, uh, a level of emotional intensity without the big play. Absolutely. Captain Crossley picks it up. Again, they run straight downfield without any any intervening uh, swing pass. Brown absorbs the foul on the sideline and just moves the disc uh, back. And there appears to be a call on the play. Pick, Pick called. Uh, and this goes back. It's going to go back to Eddie. And QC's going to move back into the stack. And a ton of, of separation between the disc the handlers and, and the cutters. Yeah. And the cutters. I think this a lot of that's by design, actually, that the Australians want to play a big, wide open game. And a powerful huck straight down the sideline, but too short and not able to sneak it down that sideline window. No, you know, I mean, I think that could even be uh, a bit more of a window against some of these other teams, throwing a, you know, a low, hard huck yeah. against uh, Team Canada, Team USA, or some of the European teams might work rather nicely, but Japan is so well built to deal with that. Oshida with the big huck. Oh! Great deep by and Brown. Brown is going to make up two steps and get the huge layout block to maintain possession. QC to cross. She really, she poached off the back of the stack. Not, you know, that was not really anywhere close to her Brown. girl. And great, great defense. She's really been the only thing keeping them in the game so Absolutely. far. Absolutely, and that's the kind of play that they need, really, from her. You know, I mean, she is, she is uh, one of the older, more experienced players on this Australian team. She was at Worlds four years ago in Vancouver. Um, and is certainly, I think, a little bit more of, they call her Ma, she's a little, or Mama, rather. She's a little bit more of a, I think, calming force on their team, and certainly very used to international competition. Foul on the throw. Imataka probably getting a piece of the disc before it's released. A lot of Australians with their hands on their knees at this point. Yeah, this is interesting. I, you know, one of the drawbacks of that wide open offense is it's a lot of running. It's a lot of running. A lot of running up and down the field from handlers and cutters. Yeah. Again, we see the, the poach from the, from the Japanese handler defenders. Crossy's able to utilize that poach. Flip back to Edie. Crossy. QC. There's that big backhand. Huge layout wow, by Martin. Pancake. With the pancake and the shoulder drop. Back to Crossy. Lost a lot of yards there. QC and there's a pick, he's going to send it back to Crossley on the sideline. Hey. Wins pick back up. Really nice layout. Wow, way up in the air and reached down for the pancake catch. That was a, that's a tough catch. Ooh, makes my tough shoulder, to hang on to, Makes my yeah. shoulders hurt just to look at it. And she walks away from it. No problem, back to the stack. Vertical set here. Uh, from the Aussies. A nice, trans smooth transition out of their horizontal into the vertical uh, as they get into red zone offense. I would agree with you, though. They're, they do, s you know, uh, I think they're bringing some of the same mentality to this end zone offense where they like the really spread out field, and it means that they maybe lose more yards than they need to on that top. Lots of poaching here on the goal line from the Japanese. Great yeah. patience. Lucy throws the hammer. And, and it's a second layout by Martins on the point. 
4-2, really nice in zone. Oh, really nice patient work by the three handlers, Crossy and QC and Edie, and just to maintain possession and give them that shot to the sideline. Absolutely, and you saw, you know, uh, I think a lot of people would say, oh, that was impatient because they threw that hammer, but, you know, the Japanese uh, defense was really collapsing on the middle, and it freed up actually exactly that throw. You wouldn't like to see a blade backhand. Um, I mean, really, that's a perfect throw for that situation, and big receiver comes up with it. Yeah. It, the hammer's a tough throw there in the wind. The wind is actually straight. Wind's coming straight down the field, and so the whole bottom of the disc is exposed uh, to push that hammer out away. And here we're going to see it. She just looks. She sees Martins with a ton of separation. Great Martin, catch. Martins just makes sure. Absolutely. Yeah, she could have stood that up potentially yeah. and one-handed it, but yeah. goes for the pancake. Yeah. Although the pancake layout, I'm not sure if that's... It's a tough one. It's kind of... She's kinda, done it twice. Yeah. Kind of bad fundamentals, though. So Australians here pulling uh, down four to two. What are you going to do defensively here? You try some junk, play man. I wouldn't be surprised to see them throw a little bit of junk. We got another, again, kind of a tall, and here it is, the junk with a tall mark. Tighter, down. tighter than than it had been before. They've got yeah. Nice little hammer by, by Fujikawa. And, it'll, you know, yeah, I think it'd be tempting it. to say that's a, a bit of a win if if they can force those kinds of throws, but Japan is just so pinpoint with that oh. little hammer. Fujikawa makes a mistake, and Wallace is able to get the D. Would be huge to capitalize here. Lee, again with a hammer, and again, with the goal, Cat Phillips pulls it in, and that's 4-3 Australia with the break, getting one back. That was a great catch, actually. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a saucy throw right there. Going yeah. downwind, that thing's yeah. coming in pretty hot. And it looked like she got two hands on it. You she know, got two kind hands of on across it. her body. and You know, when that was when uh, Lee released that, I thought that was going to be a turnover. But I think that's just a case of knowing, hey, this is my main this target. Is, yeah, this is our stud. And uh, you know? Catfield's made it look easy. Made it look easy. Here's the swing to Lee. She sees separation. Easy. No hesitation. Yeah. And, you know, I mean, again, a young team, you love them being able to uh, throw big throws, catch big catches. Yep. You know, they're going to ride that momentum. That's great. In certain situations, they might have to manufacture it by just making big plays. Right. You know? So I, I, if I'm the Australians, I'm going to play that junk or some kind of junk again. I Especially going downwind. You know, actually, I'd be interested to see what that looked like going the other way, too. Right. Right here. Just maybe play a little softer. Yeah, because uh, certainly in this direction, I actually would expect that Japanese blade going over the top, and they won't do it. But I would expect that blade going over the top to be a little bit more difficult in but this direction. They do choose, though, to play a straight man. So Mishima with the big throw to the other submission on the team. That is And here we see a really characteristic um, what we'll call Japanese huck. Um, we saw this a lot from the men, which is swing comes out wide yep. onto our side of the field and the thrower really just throws a fake to the outside and then stands it up and immediately throws back across the field. Yeah. Um, and, you know, it's such a soft spot if you can hit it in most defenses. Yeah. But it's also, it's a kind of throw you, and the throw and cut, you just need to practice that combination over and over and over to get it right. And they clearly have. And they clearly have. Um, and, you know, I mean, you see, if you watch those receivers, um, they're not even looking at catching that hook on the same side as... No, they're as just going, they're, they're yeah, going straight to that it's weak side. One, as soon as they see that swing, even before someone's caught it on that swing, they're taking a jab step to the open side and they're gone to the back. Yeah. And clearly um, and they're great it's at fruitful. It. They're it great at throwing it. They're great at catching it. And, it, and it really plays into their strength too, which yeah. is quickness and speed, speed. Um, over height. So the Japanese pulling here up 5-3. Kind of a little hanging in the wind. 
looked like a bit of a short pull at first, but it went a lot further than I would have thought. Martin's on the sideline. Well marked. She's going to try to fight through and get the throw. It's a jump ball. Deed by Ito. A little bit of discussion waved off. Not a fan of that throw. Came, came quite late. Receiver had separation. Um, Early, right away. Right away, and it wouldn't even have been a huck. No. It would just have almost been an upliner for 20 yards. Yeah. But like once you fake twice, yeah. you got to. That's a tough one. The Australians bring it in, forcing backhand. And an immediate and hand block. Foul. Foul. <sighs> foul called. And it doesn't look like there's any dispute over that. Edie with the mark. Got right Getting that backhand up line. Fujikawa. Huge bid from Brown. Brown. Fujikawa. Big forehand, lots Another of space. Another really nice throw out to the far side. Oyama. Oh. Able I'm to go out there, get it, just waiting for it. Wow. I mean, a really, really textbook throw. Looks like there might be a call here. Travel. Travel called well way, back. way back. Three, four, five throws back before the layout bid by Brown even. You know what I really appreciate there, actually, about Japan? I think they all maybe were informed that it was a travel, but they have a choreographed end zone celebration, and they went through the entire thing before dispersing and going back. I think, again, it lends itself to the idea, you know, they've got a game plan as far as how they're going to keep their energy up. And they're just going to do it no matter what. And they're just going to do it no matter what. They get scored on if travel gets called back. They're going to do it. And, you know, that, that kind of team chemistry stuff, it can sound hokey, but um, for certain teams, it's absolutely the right way to go. Yeah. You build around stuff like well, that. Once you have a plan on how you're going to maintain it, you, you just, just go. You just do it, yeah. So it's coming back in, forced back in on the far side. Fujikawa with the disc. Japanese in a pretty downfield, a pretty traditional horizontal stack, but the handler set is very unusual, although it quickly comes out to be... Uh, what you'd expect. Back to Fujikawa. Fujioka with the huck. Again, that lovely weak side huck. Brown in pursuit. Can't quite get there. Ito pulls it in. Mizukami with the disc. Fujikawa looking. And flips to Ito in front of the diving Brown. 6-3 Japan. And again, that just that classic weak side huck. Uh, and Brown even made you know a great strides on the catch up. But look, that that offensive player just doesn't. I mean, is she running downfield. She looked that time. She did look. But the thrower didn't. The thrower didn't even hesitate. The thrower no. threw it to space. Yeah. I mean that was. I mean that was really. That's and impressive. Then, and then that little team, flip. Little flip from the goal. Sorry. Absolutely. No, no, you're right. If you were to classify the two key points of Japan's offense, I would say it's that attacking the weak side with that huck and yep. then make it easy everywhere else. Make it easy. Flip, fast. flip, 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 flip. Yeah. Flip Although we're saying those. flip, but they're not necessarily always flipping them. No. They're, they're, they're flipping them when they need to, but they're throwing them sharp when they need to. Right. But they're short throws. Yeah. Point to me. And after some initial sloppiness by the Japanese, they, they've really, I think, cleaned things up and and have gotten to a point where they're going to really force the Australians to be good about possession. Yeah. Great break here by Australia. And again, a pretty late huck. It's going to be a jump ball. Foul called. Foul. Yeah, I'm not. Some discussion. Not totally sure I agree with the foul call. I think she's going to say that that second defender came into her when she's jumping. And there's maybe a lot of contact. There's right a lot there, of contact but there, but you got to imagine a, a bit of it's mutual. Yeah. And again, you know, I, I'm not. When you're outnumbered in jump ball and you're in the middle, right. there's going to be contact. Right. 
everybody's jumping towards you. And I think, uh, you know, a tough, I think that's one of the Phillips throws the throw. Yeah. Um, tough, you know, she double pumped it. She threw the big huck fake, and then a second later threw the huck, and you know, you gotta, gotta believe at that point that receiver's it. well out of range. QC. Lee. Too far for Cat Phillips. Japanese causing a little trouble there, switching, uh, playing a little front switch. Submission on Moe to pick it up. Great D. Well defended, well defended throughout the play. Absolutely. They handle that upline cut. Up. She goes straight away. Ooh. Not the best throw. No. Rushed. A rushed forehand. Turned over quite a bit, going upwind. I really think, you know, Australia is having some success taking chances, but they're really specific kinds of chances. Uh, you know, they've, they've done well with hammers after collapsing the Japanese defense into the middle of the field and yeah. creating that space. Yeah. And they've done not so well with, with hucks for the most part, um, especially same side hucks, you know, where the receiver is on the same side as the person who throws it or the same third of the field. They've, they've really, you know, that's a tight window, but they've also, they've really not, they've thrown it late and it's yeah, not I, been successful. I think part of that credit goes to the Japanese marks is the Japanese know when to mark aggressively. Right, the cadence of, yeah. of what Australia wants to do. Definitely. Like right there, quick bump, and then she peeled off. Phillips, they're really working through Phillips at this point. You see? And again, that switchy, switchy defense. You know, it's interesting when we talked to the Japanese this morning about uh, their defensive strategy, they, they said that they were going to play strict man and that it was really only the Udo players who liked to poke. So I wonder if that poaching that we're seeing is Udo players. Right. Taking, being opportunistic. Yeah. Yeah. Did you get the sense when you were talking with them that there was a little, like, just tension between the, the, uh, the different factions within that team about defensive style? Just that when, we, when I brought up the poaching, they, they laughed about they it. They did. They laughed about it. Like they'd had that conversation before. Yeah. You know, and I, I would imagine for a lot of these teams that are sort of true all-star teams, um, potentially Australia included, uh, there could be some really serious philosophical divides. Yeah. And about how it should be played. About how it should be played. And not only that, but these are teams that, you know, some of them, as as recently as a couple months ago, were playing against each other in national tournaments right. as like hated enemies. Yeah. And now they turn around and have to sort of bridge those gaps. Some of them on pretty short notice. So, yeah, I, I imagine that happens on a lot of teams. Teams that are sort of more national. Wow. Great grab. Great catch by Inamata. She wisely holds the disc. Resets Fujikawa, Inomara. Nice, easy offense. Sameshima, Sachiko for the goal, no. Namikiri for the goal. And you're going to see here. Just nice, easy, give go offense. Wait for the Cat, open cut. Catches Cat Phillips watching. Yeah. And I'm, not, you know, not totally surprised on that. Cat Phillips did a lot of work in that point. Offensively. Offensively. It's hard to do both kinds of work. It is. 7-3 Japan. Interesting from the Japanese. They do a full team huddle between every point. They do. And, uh, you know, it, time limits. There are definitely pretty stringent time limits here yeah. uh, at the World Ultimate Championships. And, um, you know, just logistically for coaches and other players who are not going to be on the next point, that's got to be a bit difficult. 
but yeah. they're clearly very regimented about it and able to make it work. Able to make it work. So the Australians kind of up against it here. Down, uh, they're down three breaks right now. They haven't been able to get one themselves yet. Pulls short, and the Japanese are going to play what looks to be straight man. It looks like it might be a zone with some poaching. There's that big gainer by Cross. Gainer. Martin swings it from the sideline. Crossy. Puts it to Martin. Goes up big, wow. takes the hit. Seven and four. there's that energy. There it is. Again, you know, sometimes I, I think some people would classify that as a bit more of a risky throw. But really just a turn and throw to a streaking receiver came from a separate third of the field so she could really size up where that disc needed to be. Puts it and up high. Just, puts only, it up high. Only Martin's going to be able to get up there and get it. Martin's once again makes a great play and all of a sudden Australia's fired up again. You know, I mean, I think, I think they, I would highly um, disagree with anyone who said that they shouldn't take risks, but it's just the type of risks right yeah, now. Absolutely. And you notice there that's a, that's a first look up. She's not faking. She's absolutely. not pivoting back and forth uh, to try to get open. It's, it's coming out right away in the first two seconds of the stall count. And Australia has certainly proven the first part of this game um, they have some big time receivers. Big time receivers. Uh, and I, I think you go to what's working, you know, yeah. you throw to the hot hand, and right now Martins is certainly coming up with it. Brown has been clutch on both sides of the disc. Yeah. You'd yeah, love to see the Phillips time. sisters get a little yeah. bit more involved. Yeah. Um, certainly they're churning underneath, but... We've seen a lot of cat. We've not seen very much at all from Michelle yet this game. Out of bounds pull. We're on record about that. The, the, the out of bounds pool, that it's not okay. That it's not okay. I'll stand behind that one. The out of bounds pull, not okay. And we do see the junk here. Again, it's a, at least initially going to be sort of a 1-3-3 type junk. I like this look from the Australians. When they can shut, shut things down, that their size allows them to squeeze off those throwing lanes. But once it gets out in the space like this, it's a lot more problematic. And they've transitioned. Oh, and, and a Brown great again. D by Brown. Huge D. They're just getting, the Australians are just getting chewed up. Brown for 20. Palmer. Australia's offense moving quite a bit quicker, and I think it's going to be. Oh. Brindley gets blocked and is going to call a foul. I think that's going to be beneficial for them, yeah. uh, especially with regards to sort of making that coachy, possibly Ono defense be a little bit more honest. They can change the angles, they're going to get a lot more open. Brindley overthrows, and there's a pick, but it's going back. So, one interesting point of note. In the pause here, uh, that pull, that last pull by Australia, went out of bounds above the brick. But in whiff diff, you either have to take it from the sideline there, or, the or you have to go back to the brick. There's no center call. Correct. And an unforced error there by Australia. Wallace on the drop. Hidai immediately picks it up and moves it downfield. Little backhand inside out. And another wow. D. Is that three or four? That's at least three. I think three, right? She is really coming up big. Again, that, that wasn't, uh, the, the previous D on this point was just all her. That throw was not the best throw from Japan. No, and, and they, uh, had the, they had people open everywhere. They did. They, they were being very patient and just sort of a little bit of a throwing error, but Brown capitalizes. Australians come out, move it straight across the field. Japanese poaching again. I'd like to see Australia handler set maybe get a little bit more aggressive 
with yards there. Japan is way, way out in the lane off of their handlers. Second drop uh, this point for the Fire Tails. We are third offensive possession of the point for Japan. Inamoto to pick it up. And the Japanese in a vertical set. Hirai. Not much there. Well defended to be able to sneak out and get a little bit of room. Inamura. Sumeshima. Miyamoto for the goal. So chilly on offense. Nice little, that's a structural break. I mean, that, that final forehand for the goal is a break throw. Sort of, sort of but it was created four throws ago. Yeah, and that, that's what I mean by a structural break. Absolutely. Yeah, it's the, I think it's the, the throw from Itamura to uh, Sumeshima that. Well. That it, it's a backhand that it's straight up the field. It, it's not a break in itself. Right. But because of the way Sumeshima had set her cut up, it well, then gets to that whole forehand side just wide open. And, and I would even credit sort of beyond that, um, Japan is setting up their their later throws by early on in in the point and even early on in that sequence. They're they're moving those marks around so much with their footwork. I mean, they're just making and Australia is game, right? They're running, they're working hard on the mark. Yeah. But Japan is like one, two, three, four fakes going back and forth and just making that mark work so hard early in the point that later in the point it makes that just straight up the field backhand easy. Easy. So Japan pulling 8-4. Fire titles in a bit of a side stack. Isolate Cat Phillips. Almost a D. Huge backhand to her sister. I'm not sure that uh, Michelle ever quite knew where the disc was until too late. Yeah. It's like she was looking for it over her strong she was side. Yeah, shoulder looking for and, it. And it was coming in over the weak side. Japan with a chance to take half. Fujikawa uh, walking it up, flanked by Hirai and Fujioka. Classic horizontal set, very tight to the disc by the Japanese. Get some quick 20. Fujikawa. Hirai sneaks it past Cat Phillips. Really excellent throw. Namakiri to Ito. Just a quick strike. And again, just, uh, you know, Japan, it's almost the cadence their offense is quick, quick strike, little, little, little. Yeah. Quick targeted strike, little, 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 little. I mean, they're very, they're very tactical about when they take when they, those kinds of risks. And, and both Japanese teams talked about needing to manage the size of the North American and the European and the Australian teams, knowing that they're going to be undersized, and that their hucks had to be to speed and not to and not to height. And they've done that today. Absolutely. Well, it's nine four Japan over Australia. It's halftime. We will be back in about eight minutes of broadcasting here from the WIFDIF World Ultimate Guts Championships, live from Osaka, Japan. We're beginning the second half of Australia Fire Tails versus the uh, Japanese national team. Australia is down 4 9. They'll be pulling to start the second half. Chase. First half really dominated by Japan. What did they do? What did Australia not do that got us in this position? Uh, you know, a couple of things. I think um, we spoke before. Australia is a young team, and they did really well to uh, get themselves fired up by taking certain shots. Uh, you know, specifically, they threw a couple of great hammer scores. They threw a one or two hucks that were just really great decisions, great execution. Um, they've been playing really hard D. But their ability to value the disc for most of the gameplay has been not quite as good. Um, they've taken some shots that really 
were low percentage situations, and they really need to fix that in the second half if they want to get back in this game. Puchikawa, uh, again, leading the charge. Sameshima sw swung well around to the far side. Japan, uh, the Australians still playing uh, the one 3, three base junk. Oh, this one has a little bit more of a FSU look to it, a little less defined. And Cross is able to sneak on in and get a block. She picks it up, looks to move it. She's got some cutters going out. She finds Brown about at the brick mark. Brown goes weak side. Mello pulls it in for the goal. Really nice break, really important break for uh, Australia there. Huge, and, and again, you're seeing some of Australia's best players come up big. Brown doing that work up front, generate pressure. Crossy steps in, gets the break. Finds Brown. Brown sees Mello, has got all that space on the weak side. Just and I really there. like, just you know. Just Mello, just gotta get in and get it. Yeah, Brown, Brown has been so clutch for them. Huge. Um, both coming up big with some Ds, as well as providing uh, on offense, when she touches the disc, a l just a lot of poise with the disc. Yeah. I mean, you can tell she's been here before. Yeah. Um, you know, that was a throw that they, again, calculated risk uh, to uh, open receiver, yep. open thrower, throw into the break side, yep. but it's that soft spot. And I think a lot of people would say, oh, you threw across the stack. But you know, for Australia's, from their point of view, like they got big time receivers, man. They, they can throw that throw and come up with it way more than 50% of the time. Yeah. I mean, she's, she, I, I think in that situation, Brown has to, she has to make that throw. Absolutely. Yeah. Team, you know, big player, team leader. But she sized it up right and she threw a great throw. Australia with pull, I'd expect to see Junk again. That is a big pull. That is a really, really that nice pull. That might be the best pull we've seen all day. The, o the only fault you could say there would be that it came down a little too quick and Australia wasn't ready to capitalize on how deep that sat in the end zone. But they get a, they get a nice turn. And let's see what they do. They choose to be patient. QC walking to pick it up. Australia goes into a vertical stack. Let's see if they work off the front of the back here. They work middle front. And QC is able to find Meekins for the goal. Two quick, two quick breaks right away by the Australians. 9-6. Japan's still in the lead. Chase, if you're the Japanese coach, do you call, do you call a timeout here? Uh, you know, for my personal taste, two breaks in a row, automatic timeout. Automatic timeout. But, but again, I think we spoke to this earlier, Japan has a plan. You can tell. It's right. just they, they have something to deal with that situation. And in this case, it's not about calling timeout. It's maybe a personnel switch. It may be just something their coach has to say on the line. Um, but they're clearly, I think, rest assured, they have a contingency in place to deal with that situation. Yeah. And I wouldn't be surprised to see them, uh, you know, really turn it on right here with just incredibly patient offense. And I also wouldn't be surprised to see Australia, I would hope, to see the Australia women really ride this momentum and throw another point of jump, right. you know. You know, an interesting, the Japanese do not have uh, Fujikawa or Hirai or Sameshima in right now. They've they really changed their personnel for this point and taken those main three throwers off the field. And Australia switches it up and goes, man. Interesting choices. Although I, both. I, they're playing, no, they're oh, playing, no, a, they're they're playing kind a man of a and diamond. They are. You can see wow. Lee playing free in the middle of the field, just looking to find whatever sort of under help she can do. Moving around. And nice little backhand flip into the seam of the defense. Looks like the Australians uh, may have transitioned. I think they've transitioned out of it. Because you can see Lee now has stepped up and is marking. Again, that little backhand into the seam. Cat fills with a chance for a D. And gets it. And gets it. They're so casual. They are. So casual. Well, well I mean, no layout. She just runs and just reaches up and gets it. Right. There's I mean, a little he, yeah. break in the seam. Just broke off and yeah. 
attacked it. Wow. Again, that, the Australians not taking advantage of that poaching to get yards. Troublesome spot, really hangs it up. We'll see if this stays in bounds. And it does not. Doesn't? It's gonna give the Japanese uh, in zone possession on the cone here. Actually, I was wrong earlier. Smishima is in, she's walking to pick it up. In discussion with Inamura, leads it for Inamura. Smishima moving back to the dump. Uh, vertical stack, very angled vertical stack. I would be totally shocked if we saw an open side cut here. Yeah. Strong side cut. I think this is dump, like dump swing offense. Wow, great, 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 op, great D. Well defended. I, I didn't like the Japanese set. It was crowded, not no. much motion. I think your two handlers need to work a lot better there. They need to getting, work. Getting, they need to work. They just need to work, yeah. I mean, even if one just blows up the line instantaneously yeah. and gets out of there and leaves the space for the second one to come across. Japan, again, sort of in a very oh. saggy. Oh, too high for Lee. Foul call the while ago yeah. by Martins. Coming back to Gridley. Lots of separation again between the disc and the stack. Really I'm playing into Japan's desire to poach off those handlers that yeah. There's, that there is that separation and that the Australian handlers aren't doing enough to get yards well, out of yeah. that soft defense. I'm not, I'm not convinced I love that spot where the Australian handler is setting up. Uh, you know, I feel like they could get easily five more yards. They're getting, I mean, they're getting an uncontested free yeah. throw right there. No, that's what I'm saying. But Let's get, get the five yards yeah, and get the, the five free yards throw. And the free throw, right, exactly. See. Yeah. And maybe it's a testament to just, you know, how scared Australia is of the speed of the Japanese defenders that and they're really setting up with a huge, huge cushion. Yeah. Great D by the Japanese there, though. They forced lots and lots of passes. The first pass in about 10 passes that Australia tries to get out the end zone, they overthrow it. Inamura, too high in the middle of the field for Namakiri. The Australians are off and running. Great choice by Australia to get really moving. And just, just a miscue. Drop disc up high. A little quick motion from Sameshima to Yochara, and it frees up Inomata on the far side of the field. 10 6. And a waste of chance for the Australians. Really, quite. I mean, this is, a, this is an excellent give go, and then to be able to size this up and go counter flow, I mean, that's just a really great throw. Again, it's that Japanese, they're gonna run that little small pass action, and the thrower, she she never even looks strong side. She just waits for an opportunity for that marker to right. overcommit and get her that weak side. Absolutely. Motion. And, you know, I mean, that, that throw was made to look quite easy, but, yeah. I mean, it's that throw, that throw. throw is moving really fast, yeah. and that receiver is moving really fast, and to have the ability to, across the field in an upwind-downwind situation, throw that kind of laser huck, and that's just a really, really good throw, and a testament to how hard they've really drilled that kind of mentality into their throwers and receivers and their skill set. You know, I, let's go back and talk about the, the wasted opportunity for the Australians. I wonder... Part of what I'm seeing out here is that the they're unable to score when they get the block, and part of that is is that their throwers are struggling to move the disc down the field. I think I think Sarah Crossy's doing a nice job moving it, but beyond beyond Crossy, I haven't seen an Australian handler really confidently move the disc down the field. That's another really tough situation thrown to a cutter on the same side of the field. I think the cutter, uh, again, like we saw um, Michelle Phillips yeah. earlier, was really expecting it to be on the other side in that yeah. situation. That's where the room was. Yeah, that's where the room was. Um, and definitely tailored a cut to go to, 
you know, turn the page, go the other way on the opposite side, more of a Japanese style yep. deep cut. And unfortunately the thrower yeah. put her in a place where she was not in a good position. So the Australians come out playing zone in transition. You know, they're gonna look to trap both sides. Brown on the mark. Oshida with a little hammer. Now they're in the soft part of the D, moving it up the field quickly. Four or five passes, moves them around. Again, they're able to get out of the trap before it can fully set. Just a miscue there. Just a miscue and real victory for the Australians. They're able to force one, two, three, four, five, six. Finally, 10, 12 throws. Sooner or later, there's going to be a miscue. Right. Crossy picks it up. She's got Brown going out. Brown sort of asks, come on, just take a shot at me. But Crossy waits. Nice space throw to Stelter. And wow. an Great amazing scoop. pickup by Grindley. Somehow threw it underneath and around the Japanese defender. 10-7 fire tails. Just minimal, minimal s separation there. <laughs> That's a really tight window. And Great grab by Grindley. The bottom dropping out of a throw that wasn't really all that high to begin with. No. So, you know, at halftime, this looked like a blowout, and all of a sudden, I, we're in a game. Yeah, absolutely. And I think, um, you know, the situations that uh, it's, it's been really stark to me, um, the situations that Australia gets a block either with a short field yeah. or gets a block that, you know, like a catch block somewhere that allows them to move it quickly in transition. Um, I think in those situations, they've been... 100% more likely to score right. than in the situations where, you know, they made a great defensive effort, but it got macked out the back, and they've had to come up and start with dead disc offense on their own yeah. goal line. And they really struggled in those situations. And I, and I almost think, you know, one of the keys for that could be that they just need to manufacture that fast break, whatever no it is. No matter what. Just yeah. hit, you know, hit a quick throw, hit a give-go, hit something that allows you to just get your offense moving because their dead disc offense has not been great on the defensive side. Here they are back Again, in kind of a junky 1-3-3 one, three, one, three, three, three. Type, type look. And the Japanese are able to move it really quickly down the field to the offensive brick. Australians stay in it. They get the trap on here. Floater to Martins. That's always And they been the get line. exactly what they want. And right here, I think she hits that swing quick. Two seconds earlier, and they get a little bit more out of it. Poaching D by the Japanese. Martins. Matthews, and a drop disc on the sideline. Nice job on Fujikawa to try to contain the transition. Two little quick flips. And the give-go score. Give-go score, Fujioka to Fujikawa. And that, I mean, that's just about the deadliest position to be in um, for the Japanese offense. Yeah, and those two uh, throwers. Yeah, short yeah. field. Give-go situation, the defense is a little bit in shambles trying to catch up, and yep. you're just not going to catch them. Yep. Um, again, I think we're seeing, we saw there a little bit of lack of that uh, the big throw capability from the Australian offense that they got the D, not able to fast break. Throwers are not able to generate those big throws, and they end up, after two or three passes, turning it over on the short field. Yeah, you know, uh, a part of that, though, you know, I wonder if they could take a cue from Japan, who, even when they throw a big throw, it's oftentimes yeah. a 60-yard huck. You know, it's very rarely an 80-yard huck. Sure. And, and a, you know, part of potentially Australia's problem is their stack is so deep. 
If someone's yeah. going to throw that huck, it's going to have to be full field. Yeah. No question. Right. And, you know, I mean, I can't throw that throw. You, yeah. you may be used to throw that throw. But that, you know, that's a really, really tough throw. And I would imagine there may be women on this team that can do it, but it's certainly not. We, you know, we haven't seen it. We haven't seen that ability consistently by any means. No. So you'd like to maybe see them. Again, I, I, I'm oh, a big fan of their risk taking, right. but just in the right situation. QC looking to Phillips. Wow, That's great read by Phillips. Right on the goal line. Nice pressure mark. Really a foul there by the Japanese marker. High count situation. Finds Edie. QC, pick call is going to send it back to Edie. <laughs> Edie taking a moment, kind of hiding the disc from the marker so she has a chance to set up what she wants. Veteran move. Vet veteran move. Swung to Husey. Husey's going to go to Phillips. Yeah. Nice, easy goal. Easy goal. You know, Cat Phillips here in, in this half, I think, is really starting to show why she's one of the big playmakers on the team. You don't necessarily pick her out right away just because she's so uh, smooth and kind of casual in the yeah. way she runs. And, right. And catches. Big, long stride. Things. Yeah. No, but, but that was, I mean, that was an athletic rundown right there. On the big hook. Absolutely. Yeah, big, you know, foot race with one of the better Japanese defenders and able to just run it right out. No, no question. No question. And, you know, I, I really actually, I love that that particular huck uh, because it just came, you know, came from the, our sideline, right? Yeah. Came from the sideline from Edie. Yeah. But um, Phillips came from the middle of the field. Right. You know, and Edie's given an opportunity to really size up where she's going to be. Yeah. Um, as opposed to if, you know, either Phillips takes off from this side or, or oftentimes a mistake that a lot of cutters would make. Um, would be as soon as they clear the stack, they start angling toward the sideline as too opposed soon. too soon, as opposed yeah. to really kind of fading towards the middle and then being able to really attack. And adjustment that coming late. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. So the Australians pulling. Uh, we see Brown coming down early. Expect some kind of junk, and indeed it is. Pretty casual about getting the trap on. Here it comes. They're able to get out. Japanese are able to get out pretty quick. Still in it, trapping both sides. Hammer across the field to Hidai. Hidai with the weak side backhand huck. That's a lovely shot. Really, it's all the vision, it's all Hidai's vision. Yeah. Finds Inomata for the goal. Right over the top of the Australian defender. Right over the top. And again, they get that hammer swing. Here we see the hammer swing. And immediately right. you're gonna see shifts to the strong side, break yeah, side. There's no question. Inomata's right away. As soon as that hammer's up, she's already starting to set up and look for that weak side yeah. huck. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see, I think, later on in the tournament how Canada and the United States deal with uh, that weak side deep cutting of the Japanese. So um, we're going to take a short break. We're back. Uh, second half of the Team Japan, Team Australia game. Japan pulling up 12-8. Some poaching from Japan forces a dump to Sarah Crossy. Swung out to Phillips. Edie. Crossy. Edie does a nice job of picking Much up yards. Much better to get yards there. Unforced drop by Trenworth on the sideline. And going back to something we were talking about before, Lou, uh, I agree. It, it's, a, it's a really interesting and unorthodox, as far as most of the rest of the world, strategy to really hit that break side on the huck yeah. by Japan. Um, you know, in my experience, the best thing you can do is just be totally, totally honest downfield. Yeah. That's, you know, just expect that at any time that throw could come to pretty much anywhere on the field. Nice and I think, I think here today, uh, you know, Australia has actually done quite well 
in these sorts of transition, uh, you know, when they go from either zone transition, zone to person defense, or, or after a sort of a miscue by them, and now they're playing defense on that kind of transition, uh, where they've really gotten blocks, I think, has been when they are really tight on that downfield thrower or that downfield cutter. This so is like a disputed. That Fujikawa's throw to Sumishima is not in. And Sumishima is going to tap it in on the goal line. Fujikawa pulls way out. So much room that they're able to throw the dump in front of her. Kobori trapped by Cap Phillips. Throws the 15 yard dump to Fujikawa. Fujikawa right back to Kobori. Oh, there's a pick call well back. Really amazing little sequence there right on the goal line as the Japanese are trying to throw that little chip backhand for the goal. And Australia is doing anything they Anything can. to stop it, laying on the ground, putting their hands up in the air, yeah. Fujikawa marked by Martins. The Australians really need a block here. Five, point, five points really puts it out of reach for them. It really does. Japan losing a lot of yards, kind of uncharacteristically. Fujikawa? Maybe a, just a testament to the pressure that Australia. Sumishima. Oh, great Huge bid by Martins. Bid by Martins. Fujikawa on the goal line. Finds Namakiri for the goal and the 5.138 lead. Once again, we see Japan's end zone dance, team choreographed end zone dance. And we're gonna see the we're gonna see a really nice bid here by Martins coming across the field on the give go. I've been waiting all day for Australia to really sneak grab one of those going up line. Doesn't she made a great bid, it. but and she then is not able to get the mark on, which for the gives easy inside out. Namakiti the inside out lane on that backhand. And that's the risk right yeah. there. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of really positive stuff here for the Australians on that little run. It'll be interesting to see in the next, as we go into the sort of final stages of this game, if they if they have the mental strength to make another push. They made yeah. a really nice push coming out of half to pull within three. If they if they can take a hit like that of giving up a break right. and, and put on a little run, um, because they've got most of their starters are not in here on this offensive point. And the wind's picking up a little bit. And really unforced error there. Immediate drop by Husey. Second drop in a row for Australia. Again, giving Japan a shorter field to work with. Pick called. KG with the disc. You know, I, I will give a lot of credit to Australia. They are not slow about picking up on defense after a turn like that. They're in their transition D. Yeah, their transition D is just yeah. really, really quick which is so important against a team like and, this. And uh, Japan returns favor with a drop. Husey immediately picks it up, looks downfield, finds Brown. Brown swinging it out to Birchall. Throws a big floater across the field that's picked off. Oshida looking downfield. She's going to... Wow. Wow, I was calling that a turnover. <laughs> great, great pickup. Inamura downfield. Chimasa, huge block by Brown. Gets up, calls a timeout. Wow. Is that six? That could very well be six. I think that's six Ds. That's a catch block right Ooh. there. That's brutal. I mean, and that's the kind of momentum that Australia can just feed off of. You know, I just, right? I just want them to, to, to bank these. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, that six blocks that she's gotten, how many of them have they banked? One, maybe two, yeah, maybe two on her and mostly yeah. her, d her doing the hard work. And uh, with that Australian timeout, we are going to take. We're back uh, from a short break. Australia's down eight thirteen. Brown picking up the disc on the near sideline. Trap forehand. Foul um, call. Foul call on the swing to Husey. A little bit of smile from 
Suzuki on the mark. Not clear if it's contested or not. Oh, she shorts, shorts, sort of shorts the throw on that reset. And we've got uh, Inamura swinging it around. Japanese trap backhand. On that throwaway, I almost feel like whatever the contact was before uh, that was called a foul, she was expecting to see it again. Brown was. And expecting to throw through a foul yes. almost. It didn't have to. And it, di and it didn't happen. Another drop by the Japanese. And this will be a test for the Australians of what you were talking about earlier, Chase, about, about uh, their difficulty in set pieces. They're working out of a vertical stack. A little bit of traffic on the sideline to clear off. Swung around to Husey and a very nice D from Ichimasa. And they go right back they to return her. double burn. 14-8 Japan. I think now, at this point, three points left in the game for Japan. Yep. You know, Australia clearly wants to put some energy together, but I, I almost feel like they want to get on a little bit of a flow, like we were talking about earlier with uh, New Zealand. Yeah. They want to get on a little bit of a groove to set themselves up to really go in with a positive feeling to tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Um, you I know, they're clearly think their run coming out of half was a really nice, positive piece of work. Absolutely, that they can and look at going forward. You'd like you'd like to see them, you know, reproduce that in the next five six points here. Yeah. And you know, m maybe you make it a battle, maybe you don't, but at least you put your best foot forward. Yeah. Moving through the rest of this tournament, and again, it's it's a long tournament. Uh, and you really, you know, a, a lot, especially a team like Australia that seems to really feed off of the high highs and simultaneously is capable of falling into the low lows, you know, you really want to build in a tournament like this. And conversely, the Japanese here, I would expect them to really be clearing their bench a little bit, um, get a chance to get, get some minutes for some of the more inexperienced players on their team. Again, we see that really, really choreographed dropping off five, six steps by the by the Japanese defenders on the cutter, on the handlers, I mean. Phillips with the disc on the sideline. Lee. Edie. Phillips. Edie. Phillips. Phillips to Phillips. And that's a goal. That's a goal. You know, I think there we saw for the first time one of Australia's best lines. Edie, Crossy, Lee, both Phillips. Martins was in. She didn't get any touches, but she was in on that point. And uh, their offense was so much cleaner. So, so cleaner. much cleaner. Yeah. And they, I thought they did a nicer job. And perhaps it's a little bit of an up, upwind downwind issue, but they did a nice job of picking up yards against that soft Japanese handler defense. You know, when they've been going upwind, I thought that they haven't been as they haven't been as aggressive in pursuing that two, three, five yards that you can get against that really soft handler D. Yeah, that was um, really nice. And again, uh, y y a bit of a risk, but a totally well calculated risk. Phillips to Phillips, uh, you know, uh, Michelle Phillips yeah, came who caught the goal. Get, who caught the goal came all the way from the far side of the field at a full sprint, kind right. of at a diagonal. It's almost like an extended give and go because she started with it on this side, right. through the swing and like through four the swing, passes another later, swing go, and she's catching it on the side. other side. But I mean, that just that angle allows her sister to be able to really size up exactly where she's going to be and drop that disc right where it needs to be. Japanese have not cleared their bench. They get away with a little bit of a, of a miscue there. Inamura with the disc on the sideline. Namakiri. 
Excellent mark. A little bit of a miscue there on the catch. I don't know if she felt the pressure from Trenwith or if it was just a straight drop. Ouch. And a drop by Birchall is going to give the disc to Japanese on the goal line. I think there's a travel called here. They're still going to have open people on, on all sides. As you have Fujikawa coming open on the forehand side, Fujioka will be open on the backhand side. You know, this is one of those just whatever you can do, go crazy if you're Australia here. Yeah. I mean, you, there's so many possibilities. I think the only way you're getting a D here is somebody makes a mistake uh, or you do something using, unorthodox. Using a little crafty veteran play to just delay things and give everybody on their team a chance to look at what's going on and right. size things up and assess. It. Again, Japan just moving Namakiri. their markers around. Namakiri to Mizukawa, Kami, easy. Just, and you know, in the setup, it's like, it's hardly a break, it's on the break side, but it's hardly a break because of just how well they move that mark around, Yeah. you know? So we'll see the whole thing develop, sideline to sideline. Great swing there, quick release. Works the mark, just gives herself a wide open opportunity and again really great footwork there by Beautiful all footwork. of the Japanese throwers. Particularly on the goal throw. Just she uses the footwork, she just hesitates a minute, gets herself set, delivers the goal. 15-9. I'd love to see another uh, really smooth offensive point out of Australia I think. Um, they can figure out how to string that together. You know, and, and I haven't seen really very strict O and D from, from Australia. Australia. From either team. Really from either team. Um, in the way that I would have maybe expected with the kind of, um, you know, even Japan sort of described some older players and some younger players. And uh, certainly Australia has some, some veterans and some more classic offensive minded players and some young guns that you might think about putting on yeah. defense. But, you know, we've really seen pretty wide open subbing. Yeah. O to D. Again, the Japanese dropping off, poaching on the handlers. Michelle Phillips is going to put up a big forehand. It's going to be too far for... Not Virgil. Step up. Pan with a vert stack here. Super close to the sideline. Really line. close to the sideline. I wouldn't be surprised if the first move is break side out of the front of the stack. Out of the middle. Wow. Nice bid. That should be a D. Hangs up for everybody to get to play. And indeed out of, out of a crowd, Edie comes down with it. Too far for Phillips. She can't hold on to it. Again, nice transition D from the Australians. Kobori. Yamaguchi. Kobori. Suzuki. Again, looking for that tight, those tight little windows right, right at the cone. Looks off Yamaguchi. Yamaguchi. Ikeji for the goal. 16-9. Number 33, Mello, pretty close on that final upline shot. I think she was shaking her head like maybe she thought she should have laid out here. Yeah. Kind of. She should. Ah, yeah, almost. I mean, that's a 
would have been a spectacular layout, certainly, but well, I mean, it's I right. She, it's her almost she, in her hands. I she might have she touched, touched it. it. Yeah. That's a tough one. So, you know, after a nice push, uh, the Australians were at 10 7. Um, the Japanese had been able to pick up three breaks from there to really, really pull away. And I think a lot of what we saw give the Australians trouble early in the game, which was not maintaining possession and then uh, getting beat on the little quickness plays by the, by the Japanese we've seen has is, is again been a problem in this run, uh, what's been a six to two run by the Japanese here down the stretch. This game point for Japan, 16-9. This is next gen's coverage of the Whiff Diff World Ultimate Guts Championship from Osaka, Japan. Big outside in pull from the Japanese. Brindley to Crossy. Big throw from Birchall. That's the big gainer that the Australians want. And a huge forehand. Is she going to get there? Oh, wow. She almost is able to get underneath it. I gave her very little chance, and that was a really narrow miss. That Mulcher with a the, with the great wow. bid. Awesome closing speed. Uh, quick turnover from the Japanese. Gives it mm -hmm. back to the Australians. There's a foul call in the middle of the field. Grindley's going to maintain possession. Crossy on the sideline. Phillips going away. Should be an easy goal. And it is. That's the kind of easy goal you really, if you're the Australian women, you really want to bank, you know, again, yeah. trying to build momentum going into tomorrow and on in this tournament. You know, they have, uh, I think, really high expectations um, for the rest of the way. They're, you know, we spoke to uh, Brown earlier and um, really yeah. put put being on the medal podium is their goal. as their goal. And uh, there's certainly, you know, Japan is top top contender to try and knock Man. them out of that position. Yeah. Um, as well as the North American teams and potentially South American teams. Yeah, the Colombian um, kind of a dark horse. So they, they really, you know, Australia really wants to put a good little run together here, hopefully, or at least build, you know, a one yeah, hard I mean, point of D to I like take the way away. When we talked to the Australians, I really like the how they had managed their expectations um, to, to really have their focus beyond meddling, not, you know, not have their focus beyond winning, but to say, hey, we want to get, we want to be in the top three. We want to be uh, on that medal stand here in a week. And and it also sets them up well that they can take, the, the, in a game like this, they can take some shots at one of those, one of the top three teams. Yeah. If they win, it's great. And if not, they get a young team, a lot of experience in a big game in front of a big crowd. Another great pull here. Australia able to pin Japan in their own end zone. Again, throwing that kind of junky 1-3-3. A little bit different look, though. Yeah. This is a different junk. It this has a kind of a... 2-3 look, maybe? Yeah. Maybe a 2-2-1. Two, 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 Again, it's a, essentially, it's a matchup zone of some kind with some structure to it. And after a little difficulty, the Japanese are able to get out and get running. That's really where they're most dangerous. Yep. They can throw, you know, before stall one. Yeah. They're um, Sumishima. quite good. Too far, but it's soft enough that Mizukami is able to come up with the game winner for next gen ultimate. That is your final, folks. 17-10, Japan over Australia. Here we'll see. She overthrows the comeback cut, but into the wind, it's soft enough that Mizukami's able to turn and run on it, pull it in. Great run by um, Trenworth to try and try and get in there, try get and get in there and make something happen. A lot. I get it. it for both these teams, in terms of as they manage their expectations, the Japanese, their goal is to win. They get what they want. They. Great they start to the tournament. Great start to the tournament. I thought they played spotty, but then were able to clean up what they were doing and finish on a positive note. And for the Australians, that run out of the that run out of the second half. Absolutely, where they made good on some. I mean, they came up with some really big turnovers. Yeah. You know, and they they, they can clearly and they made good on them in that run. Absolutely. And, and there are also some spots I thought where they were able to play some when they particularly when I thought they stacked the line with their best with their top 
the six, seven players were really able to get some nice clean offense. Yeah. Yeah, they're, um, you know, I mean, they, they're definitely a dangerous team, I think, It'll be interesting looking to see forward in this tournament. Are, um, you know, at the end of the week. Yeah, absolutely. All right, well, this is going to be a wrap for us today. We will be back bright and early tomorrow morning. That's 8.30 local time, which I believe is 4.30 Pacific Daylight Time. And we will be broadcasting the Australia men versus the French, French men. So for all of us here at NextGen Network, I want to thank you for being with us today. You all have a great afternoon, evening, or morning, wherever you happen to be.